Hey everybody, this is Brian here. Hope you're having a great day. We're gonna get right into it. We're gonna start off with a scripture, but this scripture is a little different than some of the ones I, I read normally. This one's a little more negative. It's a little more, um, and the reason I'm starting off with a scripture, I'm gonna, it's gonna set the stage for two articles I'm gonna read. And so I'm gonna get into the scripture right now, okay? And then we'll finish with another scripture at the end, like we always do. So here we go, 2 Timothy, Chapter 3, starting at verse 1. But realize this in the last days, that difficult times will come. For men will be lovers of self, lovers of money, boastful, arrogant, revilers, disobedience to parents, ungrateful, unholy, unloving, irreconcilable, malicious, gossips, without self-control, brutal, brutal, haters of good, treacherous, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasure, and rather than lovers of God, holding to a form of godliness, although they have denied his power. Avoid such men as these. Boy, that's a list. You don't want to be on that list. This is a description of people living in the last days. Now you have to ask yourself the question, are we in the last days? Well, you guys already know the answer to that. Yes, we are. And this is the behavior of people who don't know the Lord in the last days. Do we see these things? Oh, man, do we? Every day, all around us, on television and around us, maybe even living with people in your own home that's like this. But it says in the very beginning, beginning it says, but realize this. Like, hey, you're in the last days. <laughs> when you're reading it, we are in the last days. Difficult times will come. You think? For men will be lovers of self, lovers of money, boastful, arrogant. And it goes down and it gets even worse. A disobedient to parents? That's off the charts. You know, here in uh, SoCal, Southern California, um, a few months ago, they had a thousand teenagers um, raid one of the malls just show up they got together on facebook or something on social media organized and just came to the mall uh delamo fashion center is the name of the mall at the time it was built it was one of the largest malls in america the mall's a mile long and it's two stories and they've added on to it but now i think it's in the top 10 of the largest malls in the in america and a thousand kids just showed up and ravaged the mall rioted but only one person got arrested, L.A. County, okay? Well, they shut that down. The owners of the mall um, put some restrictions in there, which has helped. But it's happening all over the, in the, all over the, the country. Smash and grab. I mean, Santa Monica, um, which is on the coast, Southern California, it was a couple, two or three years ago, they had um, the riots. And... Um, there's a place there, I can't remember the name of it. There's a bunch of shops, all high-ended shops. They just went down, I think over 80 shops went from one to the other, the other, and just destroyed and robbed the shops and nobody got arrested. When you take laws away and uh, penalties for breaking the law and consequences, that's what you get. Ungodly, unholy, unloving, Unreconcilable, malicious gossip, without self-control, brutal, haters of good, treacherous, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. This is a little different day. This is a little bit different podcast today because I want to focus on this because all of us are living around this. It's it's either in our homes or it's at work or it's in the cities close to us, neighbors. Go a little. I'm gonna go a little further here. So we're gonna go to two articles here. Um, where did I put them? Oh yeah, here we go. Um, I read this stuff. I this is. I read this this morning just before I recorded this. I'm like, I don't even want to read this. Uh, but I'm going to. This is on uh, 
Harbinger's Daily, World News Biblically Understood. Massachusetts, unanim Massachusetts unanimously passes bill that would legalize sales of babies by pregnant mothers. I'm going to read that one more time, okay? Massachusetts unanimously passes bill that would legalize sales of babies by pregnant mothers. Have we hit the bottom? I think we've hit the bottom, and now we're with a shovel digging a little deeper. This is dark. Selling babies. Now, is this going to start a whole new black market now? Or not even a black market. It's legal. Parents are just going to, women are start just getting pregnant so they can sell their babies and buy a car? I mean, babies are a commodity? That's how low human life is. That's how low Satan has brought human life. It's a commodity. Ugh. They try to destroy the baby while it's in the womb, and now it comes out, and now you want to sell it and make some money? Really? Don't you know God the Father is in heaven and he sees what's going on? He, oh, oh, I've got chills. You know why? Oh, if I can just get my words to even express the way I'm feeling right now. This, this makes me angry, actually. You can see, you probably have never seen me that way, but I am. This ticks me off. Babies? If I'm angry, what do you think the father's feeling? God the father. How does he hold himself back? Man, <clears throat> if I was in charge of that little button, you know, the one you know, push the button and everybody's gone, I mean, he, maybe hard not to push it right now. <laughs> Slap my hand, Gabriel. I don't want to push it. But I'm not in charge, thank God, because <laughs> we'd be in trouble. Oh, these idiots, these, these people, these evil, evil people. Don't they realize what they're doing? They don't, folks. You know why? God sees this and the indignation, the indignation of God is about to be thrust upon this unbelieving world. Because when we're raptured, then all the restraints are gone and the rapture is about to happen any moment. And I read stuff like this, it even solidifies how close the rapture is. Because this is a line that man is going over. Now, I know babies have been sold for a long time in the black markets. I, I, I get that. You know, organ harvesting and all that. That's going on right now. Uh, child trafficking is rampant. You know where the worst part of child trafficking is in the world? In California. Yeah, we're number one. Yay, California. God, these people need to get saved. They need to get saved. Wow. Folks, you've been watching my videos for a while. You know, I normally don't go down this road, but I, I saw this this morning and there's so much to talk about, but I have to talk about this. This is pure evil. The rapture's about to happen. Darkness is coming out of the woodwork and it's not even, and it's not afraid to show its head. But you know what? Light is going to come from the heavens and we're going to be transformed in the twinkling of an eye into a glorified body. We'll fly like Superman into the sky. We'll meet our Lord in the air and thus we'll always be with the Lord. I'm more convinced today than I was yesterday that it's right. At, we're right at the door and I'm convinced every day that keeps going more and more. It's it's I read this stuff. Wow. I got uh, these people do not realize the the coals of judgment they're heaping upon themselves by doing this. And it was unanimously passed in Massachusetts. Everybody voted for it. Um, yeah, he, I'll just read a little bit here. I, I passed this, but I just, the title. Uh, it's impossible to stress enough how much the abandoning of biblical authority and thus the absolute morality of the Christian worldview has impacted our society, hurting the most valuable, most vulnerable women and children. And a new bill that unanimously, keep that in mind, unanimously passed the Massachusetts House just highlights another layer of the brokenness that comes from 
leaving behind God's design for marriage, gender, and sexuality. Yes, he's right. 100% right. He couldn't have said it better. I should have just read the article. <laughs> he's right. Okay. Just bear with me. One more here. I'm almost there. It's hard to read this stuff, you know, but we got to do it. We got to know what's going on. We got to warn people. We got to get people ready for the rapture because the rapture is almost here. And that's where all myself and you guys are doing with your family and friends and other, other watchers out there are doing the same thing. Time is short. There's not much time. We're on the wall blowing the shofar because we're gathering the troops because we're getting out of here really soon. Okay, this is on Chick, it's called Chick Publications. I don't think I've ever read off of this one. Fifth graders now enlisted as homosexual groomers of kindergartners. <laughs> Gosh, I, I might have to just stop the podcast because I don't know if I can go on. Oh my, I'm not laughing because it's funny. I'm laughing because this is just absurd. Okay. I'm going to read it one more time. Oh, my goodness. Oh, how does God control himself? Fifth graders now enlisted as homosexual groomers of kindergartners. Oh, it shows a picture of these little kids watching a little girl. I, you know, I'm just going to show you the picture. Okay, I hope you can see this. You guys see that? That's... Oh my gosh. Uh, the new Kinder Buddy program in Southern California elementary school has caused an outrage parents to storm the school board meetings. One fifth grader came came home upset that he had been paired as a mentor with a kindergartner student and they had been asked to share their weird coloring book and video called My Shadow is Pink. When the parents checked out the video, he found it was a diabol uh, diabolically clever piece of homosexual propaganda designed to teach children cross-dressing and gender confusion. You can view the video here. Uh, I, I, I'll read a little more. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, you can turn the video off if you want. I don't blame you. Using a child's shadow as a symbol of sexual identity, it is designed to awaken the idea that he might really be a girl instead of a boy. At first, the character's grumpy-looking father frowns on the idea of cross-dressing, but ends up putting on a dress himself, validating the child's fantasy. <sighs> oh. What did Jesus say about anyone that would hurt the little ones? Remember, he was when he was here. He's here now, but when he was ministering here, and the kids were coming around him, and the disciples were saying, telling the kids, "Get away! Don't bother him! Don't bother him!" Paraphrasing, okay? No, don't keep these coming from me. Matter of fact, anyone who wants to harm one of these little ones, a millstone be thrown around his neck and thrown into the sea. A millstone was a hundred pounds. That's what Jesus thinks of this. Uh, how does the how, how, how does God do I guess he's God that's how he does it uh, I'm going to read something here and then I'll be done it's going to be a shorter video shorter than some of them most of them let's see we need to pray for our kids don't we all around the world, this is happening. It's not just California. Everywhere. In every country, every city, every county. We need to pray for our children and others. I'm going to read this.
Revelation 6, starting at verse 3. This is what's coming. This is what's right around the corner after the rapture. When he when he broke the sec when he broke the second seal, I heard the second living creature saying, Come, and another and a red horse went out. To him who sat on it was granted to take peace from the earth, and that men would slay one another with a great sword was given to him. A third seal, I stopped I just passed over the first one. It's about the Antichrist. When he broke the third seal, I heard the third living creature saying, Come, I looked and behold a black horse, and he who sat on it had a pair of scales in his hand. And he heard something like a voice in the center of the four living creatures saying, A quart of wheat for a denarius, and a three quarts of barley for a denarius, and do not damage the oil and the wine. That means it takes a month wages to buy one meal. When the lamb broke the fourth seal, I heard the voices of four living creatures saying, Come, and I looked, and behold, an ashen horse. And he who sat on it, his name was Death, and Hades was following with him. Authority was given to them over a fourth of the earth to kill with the sword, with the famine, with the pestilence, and with the wild beasts of the earth. I'm not going to go on there. You get the picture. That's after the rapture. How soon after the rapture? I don't think very long. That's what's coming to those people that I just read about these children, what they're doing to these children. I pray that these people, whoever they are, they need to ask Jesus in their heart right now and ask forgiveness and repent because judgment's coming. I don't want to be one, like one of those Old Testament prophets and say, you know, judgment and death is coming. But it is. It It, it is. We're, we're saved. You know Jesus in your heart. Death, burial, resurrection, the blood of Jesus paid for your sin on that cross. You ask him in your heart. You believe who he says he is and what he did for you. You're saved. If you don't do that, that's your future. And that's as good as it's going to get because after that, you're going to be in hell. Hell makes Armageddon look like a week in Hawaii. Well, wow, Brian, you're a little animated today. I'm not, my heart is just, when I read this, those two articles this morning, I was sitting in my car reading this. I thought, oh my goodness. How does Lord, our God, put up with us? Not us, but the world. It's called grace and mercy. We didn't deserve grace and mercy, but he's given it to us through his son, son Jesus Christ. I'm going to end on a better note, okay? Okay. I'm sorry if I'm a little animated, but wow. Are we in the last days? How can anybody, how can anyone deny we're in the last days when you read stuff like that? That's the next level. Um. I'm going to end with this passage. I want us to end on a good note here on what what our future holds. Here we go. 1 Corinthians 15, starting at verse 50. Now I say this, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Behold, I tell you, a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For this imperishable must put on this perishable must put on the imperishable, and this mortal must put on immortality. But when this perishable have put on the imperishable, and this mortal have put on immortality, then will come about the saying that is written. Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding the work of the Lord, knowing that your toil is not in vain in the Lord. That passage is about to be fulfilled any moment. Any moment. 
the trumpet's going to blast. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, starting at verse 13. The, the voice of the archangel, the voice of God, the trumpet, the dead of Christ will rise, will be changed. All this, and what I just read here, your mortal body is going to be immortality. The perishable, it means, it, you know what perishable is, it just wears out. This body is wearing out. All of us, I don't know who you are, wherever you are, but I can tell you, your body's wearing out. You're going older every day. It's just the way it is. But soon, like any moment, you won't have to worry about that. That will not be an issue ever again. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? That's awesome. And all this evil and the passages I just read in the beginning about lovers of self, haters of God, revilers, disobedient to parents. Second Timothy, I think chapter two. Uh, yeah, chapter two, verse three. Um, we're in the last days. We're in the last days. Oh my goodness. We are the chosen generation. We've been chosen to be born at this time and to be saved and born again at this time. How lucky are we? I know people try to win the lottery and do all that stuff. And yeah, I, I get that. And the odds are like, what, 300 million to one or whatever it is. What are the odds since the beginning of time that God chose you to be saved and live where you live in the times that we live and be saved now? It's off the charts. The odds are off the charts. We are born-again believers, and we're almost out of here, folks. We are almost out of here. Pray. Pray for these kids. Pray against these evil people. And pray, God, come, Lord Jesus, come quickly. Amen. I'll see you at the rapture. Bye-bye, guys.